In this video, I'm going to explain how I fitted the standalone cycle analyst to my cheap e-bike. Many of the cheaper controllers don't have a cycle analyst direct connector, so you'll have to buy a shunt along with the cycle analyst. The direct connector, which usually goes into the controller, is connected to the shunt instead. You'll also need a cycle analyst version, which has a speed sensor. I bought the cycle analyst and shunt from a UK company called Jostech, who were incredibly helpful when I had any questions. The cycle analyst I bought is the version 2.4 with direct connector and the shunt sits between the battery and controller. So the first job is to wire the connectors, in my case XT90s. I wanted to show exactly how I soldered the connectors. So this part might be a little dull for those of you who don't want to know how to solder the connectors. If you want to skip ahead, the next step is at 9 minutes 48. Firstly, I'm going to tin the wires and the terminals on the XT90 connectors. I'm going to slide some heat shrink over the wires first. A lot of current goes through these wires, so you need to make sure you have good connection using plenty of solder.
Now the soldering is done, I'm sliding the heat shrink over the connector and giving it some heat to keep it in place. That's the battery side done and I won't bore you with any more soldering so I'll speed up the soldering of the controller side. And that's it, the shunt's finished. The cycle analyst is going to replace the cycle computer and basic voltage monitor currently installed on the bike. They both do a good job, but the cycle analyst will give me far more information about what's going on with the motor, controller and battery. The voltage meter currently runs down the top tube to the controller and it intercepts the wires for the battery indicator lights on the throttle. I want to fit the cycle analyst on the stem, but the stem's too big for the bracket to go around. So I've removed the bracket from the cycle list and I'm going to use a threaded quarter inch mount instead. This is the cycle list fitted. It sits too high for my liking but it works fine. Ideally I'll find a mounting option which gives it a much lower profile. It's currently mounted using a GoPro zip mount along with a quarter inch GoPro mount. The next job is to fit the speed sensor to the fork. I'll be fitting it here where the existing speed sensor for the cat eye currently is. The sensor will pick up this magnet, which as luck would have it is the same magnet as the cat eye, so I won't have to change it. After the speed sensor is fitted, I'll be connecting the direct connector to the shunt. The wire runs down the top tube to the shunt, which will sit here on the down tube between the controller and battery. The basic setup is now complete and the speed sensor is in place. I had to pack it out with some foam so that it was close enough to pick up the magnet. The shunt is also in place and roughly in its final position. I think I'll use some double sided foam to stick it to the back of the controller. All that's left is to tidy up all of the wires. Here's the finished fit and all seems to be working fine. The double sided sticky foam worked great for mounting the shunt and everything else is just zip tied together. 
There are several videos on YouTube showing how to set up a cycle analyst, so I'm not going to repeat that step here. For a cheap kit such as this, all you have to do is enter the wheel size, battery type and capacity, and that's all there is to it, so it's very simple really. If you're fitting a cycle analyst, I hope this video has helped a little.